Tonight, with the governor ordering the permanent closure of that old phosphate plant, we are getting our first look at what is happening to the wastewater that is still there. This is Nightside. I'm Carolina Lead. And from here in the studio, I am Ryan Bass. Governor DeSantis visited Piney Point today and directed the Department of Environmental Protection to come out and figure out a plan to clean it all up and then shut it down for good. We all learned about that Piney Point plant nearly two weeks ago. That old phosphate plant led to evacuations and the pumping of more than 200 million gallons of contaminated water into the bay. DeSantis directed 15.4 million in agency funds so they can pre-treat that water at that site because down the road, that water is going to need to be removed. It's just not clear where it will go just yet. But he wants to get ahead of any potential environmental disasters. DeSantis wants that money to be used to remove the nutrients in that water that could cause algae blooms, red tide, and fish kills. And tonight we're getting a first look at what that cleanup effort is going to look like. Our Josh Adorowitz shows you the first steps to clean up that water and how you can track where it's going. This could effectively be considered the beginning of the end of Piney Point. This new video from Drone 10 shows what the process of removing phosphorus looks like. One of the key nutrients that feeds red tide and a key first step. Because whatever ultimately happens to the rest of this water still on site, it will have to be treated. Out on Tampa Bay, researchers are only beginning to learn the impacts the millions of gallons of untreated nutrient-rich wastewater dumped in will have. The pollutants in the water. Bob Weisberg is leading a team of USF researchers creating these models, like a weather forecast of where and how the wastewater will flow through the bay. You'll very clearly see the back and forth motion of the tides, and you'll see the gradual spreading out. The brighter the color, the higher the amount of nutrients. Weisberg says these models are already reflecting reality. What we do know right now, and it doesn't take a scientist, you can go out on a boat and see it with your own eyes. There is an impact. I mean, the water has a dramatically different color in the vicinity of Port Manatee. The next step, he says, will be developing long-term forecasts to determine just how long this stuff could stick around. Will it end tomorrow? Will it end a week from now? Will it end a month from now? This is the only kind of tool that enables one to start thinking into the future of, of what's going to happen. You can really see a stark difference in the water there, especially right around that plant. Researchers use these same models to study red tide. The professor says it's still too early to tell if these nutrients could spark red tide blooms. But we are going to continue to keep an eye on it just in case there is anything that you need to know. We'll send updates straight to your phone that you need to be aware of.